It's YouTube Wednesday. I hate to start out with a bunch of voiceover, but this is uh, just mixing concrete. This is a quickrete, fast set. I use the recommended amount of water uh, as I mix it up. Um, and I'm putting it in two different five gallon buckets. And the reason I'm doing that is these will be the bases for the statues. I'm going to insert a 1x4 that I cover the end in Vaseline and when I insert that in there um, I'll be able to pull it out as soon as it's dry. I want to show you this though. There is the uh, 1x4 getting ready. Um, but what I wanted to show you guys was that when you set the handles up make sure that you're able to lift the bucket without getting in the way of the board that you put in the concrete. Uh, that's important for moving it around later. Here I'm just letting the concrete set and uh, it's just about ready. So I'm just going to screw this little crossbar to this one so that I have a little bit of room to put up a head. Yes, those are shoulders. It is that simple. I have purchased from the dollar store some skulls, yes. Are these great skulls? No, they're tiny, but they're gonna make great shoulders. Just give it a cut right there between the eyes. We're gonna cut a little strip out here. Just so you can see what I did, that's what I'm cutting out. How do we do on our guesstimate? A little more. I'm going to take that little more out of the top, not the bottom. There we go. That's a much more organic shoulder. And now that is a set of shoulders on here. Uh, you can put a screw in these if you want. I'm just going to hit them with some tape because this will be so protected from the elements that the tape won't uh, come apart. Okay, I now have two frames. That's why we all set the handle so they can be moved easily. My head is pretty far forward of my shoulders. Uh, you know, it, it's a few inches out there. So I'm going to make sure when I put the heads on these guys that the heads are a little further out. Uh, so this one is set up right. This one I want to flip around. We have head options, all right? So one of your head options is just a wig head. Just a regular wig head, just like this, that you can put right here in order to make your uh, graveyard statue. Perfectly fine, good option. You can make a nice hood over this. It'll look like a female statue. I am probably going to use a skull that I purchased. Uh, so this skull happened to be $4.99. It says it's a realistic skull. And I think that right there is a pretty good spot to mount it. Um, it depends on how tall they are. If they're taller, then you might want it looking down. 
Uh, and I think I want mine looking a little bit down anyway. I like that much neck on it. I'm going to tape it in place right here. Uh, the bowl from the dollar store. I'm just cutting this rim off of it. I don't need this rim. I don't need this rim. I don't want this rim. I'm not excited about this rim. That is what I want. That is why I want it. Doesn't that explain everything? This version will be a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to use my cutoff end that I actually put in the concrete. It's a little sticky from the Vaseline. That doesn't matter. And I want to attach this bowl to it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tape that on well. Uh, tape the bowl to the not Vaseline side. It'll tape it. I has a piece. Okay, now I'm going to attach it to the piece. So now I have this suspended bowl. Why? This will be an empty hood. I'm just going to leave this one empty. And I think that's going to be a lots of fun. There we go. Now, more of the bucket is in front of this. And that'll help hold the rope open to see nothing. The first thing I want to do is I want to get this covered in fabric. I want to hide all of this. And I want it to be drapey and I want it to, you know, um, just have a nice hang to it. The tarps that I got, I got two canvas tarps that were six foot by nine foot. Since I am just under six foot, these shoulders are gonna be just under, or just at five foot probably. So that nine foot, it's gonna take all of that one length to go around this. So I'm gonna cut that, and uh, one of them is just gonna cover the body. The other I'll have for detail on the head. So let me get to that now. Here's one of the tarps and I have laid it out uh, here. I don't need all of this. Uh, it, the way it's folded, it's kind of folded in one foot chunks, and I'm gonna cut along the second fold. So I'll have a two foot strip by nine foot. Now this one's gonna be about eight, because again, I use a piece of it to test it. out a two foot strip of this. And I'm just going off of their folds. You do not have to be super precise. Okay, that is a nine foot by two foot strip. That nine foot will be just a little bit off the ground. It's perfect. This is another nine foot by two foot strip. This one, I'm going to cut that hole in for the head. Fold it up. We're going to find the halfway point. And see if you fold it like that fold it over, fold it over, then I can just cut a little, cut that corner off, and I have made a circular hole that I think that that skull will fit through. Yep, no problem, perfect. And I want to treat this before I put it on. This is Loctite Heavy Duty PL375.
really want it to saturate in, so I'm going to spread that out with this yellow spreader. Yellow spreader I got from Harbor Freight. Uh, but it's just a piece of plastic, so you can make yourself one out of a butter tub lid or whatever. I'm taking it all the way to the edges. This is also an adhesive, so this is going to help me glue it together, too. All these pieces that I'm doing separately, I'll be able to attach together. And it spreads so nicely, I don't mind just dumping all of this up here and then uh, hoping to get it to go all the way down. Apply. Get another strip done, we'll put it on the opposite way to close up these sides. I'm now fine with the next piece being for the head. Because this is the hood going over top of the head, I don't need to cut a neck hole. On this piece for the head, I want to do a fold over so I have a nice edge. I'm going to fold it over a couple of inches. Push those together, and now I'm going to just caulk right on top. Okay, so now I apply, and I have that folded edge. It's going to be up on top because that's where all of my uh, goop is. Carry it here. I'm going to control the folds so they look cool and add some depth. I'm just going to use a little bit of the uh, Loctite on my hand in order to finish off that interior lapel that shows. Yes, sir. Now we let this dry. So for the next. Uh, statue we're doing. We're not going to use the um, canvas at all. We're going to use this, which is polyethylene foam. Uh, this is underlayment material. Uh, it is used underneath of tile, I think, but uh, this big roll of it was four foot by uh, four foot by a hundred foot, and that was 30 bucks. So I want to do plenty to drape on this. Um, and we're just gonna, this is a six foot table and that's about six foot tall. So once again, I'm gonna do this in such a way where I can just cut this off. So this guy is gonna be plastic, whereas the other one was, is uh, canvas and liquid nails. And this is, this is like self-adhesive, so I just take off this strip. I don't want that messing with my paint or anything. Let me 
find that middle, which I just have. Once again, same thing, any sheet material you can do that head finding with. Fold that quarter, cut off that round. I know that's plenty big to fit over that. Let's put this piece on. This is plenty, like I did a little extra because I want this to drape. I want this to be a little more dramatic. I can make the other one just as dramatic, except um, I want to try and do it with only one part. You can tell this stuff is very lightweight. It's very billowy. Let's get another sheet on. In order to calm this down and to control it a little better, uh, I'm going to actually hit it with a heat gun and that will allow me to shape that quite a bit. For ease, I'm going to shape one layer at a time. And see, and it sticks to itself just like that. Uh, it just sticks to itself. So. Um, I, I really like that about this. Let's get it warm, you put it together, and that, that's going to stay. So that's a lot more contained, it's a lot tighter uh, than it was before. This guy covered and it's tight and uh, the heat gun just brought it all down. Now I'm going to go ahead and add on the uh, hood over top of this. I'm going to heat gun an edge on this the same way I glued an edge onto the other one. But that heat gun makes it stick to itself. And that's a nice hem on that now. Okay, so now I have this edged over. See how it's got a hem on it? We have had a slight change of scenery due to weather, and I'm gonna attach his hood now. I want to find the middle. And that's all it takes to get that stuck on there. Keep those shoulders. I want to preserve the shoulders. Okay, let's cut another strip and uh, reinforce that hood layer. Put some hot up, hot air up into that piece, and then I can fold it down. Hot air up into it, and then I can fold it on down. I'm going to hit the top of the head again, one more piece over that for a hood. This polyethylene foam is a miracle as far as sticking to itself with heat. Okay. So now this guy, I feel really good about. I feel like like this hood is uh, pretty stout considering, you know, what it's made of. It's a couple layers. I'm going to pull this out of here, okay? Okay, so now we have an empty hooded, headed uh, critter. You know what? I want to do a fold right here, and I'm going to use this other piece. 
to really make this emptiness come to life. Right there, and I just installed that right here using heat, uh, the same. Technically this is foam, but it's polyethylene foam. It will not be eaten by um, spray paint. I'm spray paint. Now it's a matter of just painting both of them. I want to trim up down here. That's a little much down there, so let's trim that up. Okay, I have two painted sketches. All right, let's uh, give this some time to dry. Okay. So that's a little bit of shading on this. We might go up this way a little bit on the face. Just that up shadow. And now we'll grab some white. Now down. All of this is from above. We have that great base gray. Let's get in here and start adding some more of a stone look. This is a black can that I took that little tip out of. This is giving me a nice speckle. I'm going to use that same spatter tip on it. You don't have to do this to all your tips. You can just do one tip and then swap it on the cans if it's all the same kind of paint. Okay. And now we'll get a white spatter on here. So this is that stone paint, where if you get close, see all the little flecks from the different colors? Okay, so now let's paint this one. Slightly different process, because we based it in black. Took very little paint to get that gray. Let's go back with the white. Spatter. Teal blue I've got. Nice blue sheen to that stone. A little bit of green. A little bit of algae look, a little bit of moss. Now I have some actual moss. This is just moss for like container gardening. Uh, and some Super 77 spray adhesive. I want to do a final. I want to clean up that bucket down there a little bit, hit it with a little bit of black so it goes away a little more. set these guys outside and see how they look out there.
Both of these are waterproof because one is plastic and the canvas one is impregnated with the liquid nails. So it has a plasticky, rubbery coating on the outside also. Um, you might lose some moss uh, with wind and rain and stuff, but uh, they, they should hold up really well and they're both kind of thickened so they're uh, better in the wind. And uh, this one here, ideally I would have a little bit more of that material. I was wrong in the beginning, I only had 100 square feet, which is 25 foot of it. But uh, still, pretty happy with how it turned out for the time uh, invested. Both of these were made in about three hours. Boris. Boris. Go make stuff, everybody. I've made a ladle. It's an upside down ladle. It's the Big Dipper. I've made a Big Dipper. Hehe. <laughs>